ألم يأني للذين آمنوا أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله وما نزل من الحق الحمد لله حمد كثيرا طيبا مبارك فيه كما يحب الله تعالى ويرضى الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بحق بشيرا ونذيرا وبين يدي ساعة ومن يعت الله ورسوله فقد رجدا ومن يعسهما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أما بعد فعباد الله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته واتقوا الله واتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم وتساءلون به واتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يا عباد الله after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declaring that he is the only deity the only one deserving of our servitude and our worship and bearing witness to his final prophet and messenger our prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thereafter sending salutations 
now I'm upon him, his family, his wives, his children, his companions, and the salutations and the greeting of assalam, peace upon the believers of today, yesterday and tomorrow, and ma'abad, we reminded ourselves from the various book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fear Allah as it is his right to be feared, as he deserves now to be feared. And fear your Lord who created you and who will ask you whom you have to answer to. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in statements and in action. And the tongue, the statement of the tongue is also an action. But we say if you call the fear to emphasize it, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the tongue of the Muslim. قال شيخنا بن باز رحمه الله تعالى فمن أراد عزة الدنيا ورزق الحلال فيها ونعيم في الآخرة فعليه بالتقوى. The noble scholar Ibn Baz رحمه الله تعالى he advised us that whosoever wishes for the عزة the honor of the dunya and those things that are halal there within. And the benefit, the naim, the bliss of the hereafter, it is upon us, Ya Ibadullah. It is upon him, it is upon her to have a taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in another ayat in his noble speech, What taqwa fitna tala to see banna ladina dhalamu? Al ladina dhalamu minkum khasa. Allah azza wa jal, he warns us. To have a taqwa with a special type of fitna. And this fitna, Imam Abagawi rahimullah ta'ala, as he explains in his tafsir, that this fitna here means ikhtibar. Now, wabala, it means a test, a trial, wabala, calamities. Naam, calamities. Wa'alamu anna waha shadid, shadidul iqab. And warning about this fitna that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, but He is also Shadid al Iqab. The punishment is in the hands of this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa qala ibn Qayyim rahim Allah ta'ala. Fa ni'amutu al ibn tila, fa ni'amu ibn tila min Allah wa imtihan, yufhiru biha shukur, shukur al shukur. Well, kufur, kufur. The kufur, kafur. So Ibn Qayyim Ta'ala mentions from the ni'mah of trust, tests, and trials is that it will become apparent who is thankful, the shukur, who is thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the kufur. So the ibtila, it is the deciding factor between those who are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who are not thankful. Those who are in gratitude, have in gratitude, they are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would ask daily, two times a day, Ya Hayyun Ya Al-Qayyum, Ya Hayyun Al-Qayyum, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his tremendous attributes of being Al-Hayyun, Al-Hayyun, Al-Qayyum, bi rahmatik and asdaqeef. And we beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his mercy because we do not wish to be left to ourselves from the earth for a blinking or a twinkling of the eye. From the twinkling of the eye to be from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya ibad Allah, it is disaster. Halakun. Wa qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhahar al-fasadu fil barri wal bahri bima kasabat aydin nas. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in His noble speech that this facade, that this corruption, as it appears apparent upon land and sea, mean all of the facade, Ya Ibadullah, be my kasab that I do not say that it is not from Allah, it is from the hands of mankind. And we have to hold some accountability, Ya Ikhwan. Did not the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he not warn us? Had he not advised us, had he, has he not given the prophecy and mentioned that lewdness and immoral acts, that they, they will never appear amongst the people and become apparent, open, where they're no longer hidden, except that plagues and diseases that did not fall 
with our predecessors that did not happen, did not occur before our time, except for those who spread now, during our time. Sheikh Sulaiman al Ruhaymi mentioned, he said, from the reasons, from the asbab of the spread of the dangerous infections, disease, is that the people become complacent. They become complacent and they allow, and they do not enjoy the good, and they do not forbid the evil as it relates to the mood acts. Mood, and immortal acts, fahsha. And some of the elders remember in the 90s we used to call against these evil acts. We tried to change the country, but somehow the country changed us. From the spread of these infectious diseases is that the people have come complacent and they have not called out especially as it relates to the private parts. So it's upon the Muslims to grab a hold to the shield of taqwa by guarding their nam, their private parts. And by speaking out and by calling against these evil actions. But the Muslims, Ya Allah, like most people, have become complacent. We have become a people that are very complacent. We are very comfortable. And if you ask the masses from today, from the things that try and the masses today, is they don't want things to change. They don't want to be inconvenienced at the grocery store. They don't want to be inconvenienced at the job. They do not look at the immoral acts and the persecution that has been going against our brethren in how many countries, for how long, for how many decades? No, we look at our personal selves and our own comfortability. Allah Mustafa. Do we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with our condition as we relate to the way things used to be with just our fathers? We have to take some accountability, Ya Ibad Allah. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nama aya we will say falawla ijja'ahum ba'suna tadarra'u Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says falawla is this question is, is, is meaning in the past. This if with the sukun is the mahdi in the past tense. When ba'asunata ba'ra'u, when our calamities, when it touched them, that they would hum humble, humiliate, humble themselves. They would bring to themselves tawbah, with well, humility, and seek to change. Walakin qasat qulubuhum. Rather, their hearts became hard. And the most hardest of hearts, Ya Ibad Allah, the hearts of the, the kuffar, those who deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the ulama have mentioned that their hearts, their hearts without the remembrance of Allah, or rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a dead heart. A corpse that simply pumps blood. And the shaitan has made their evil deeds now. But we can see there is no reason for us to have a kipper. There is no reason for us to have arrogance. No reason for us to think that we are superhuman. As we can see just how weak, just how weak the human being, the physical composition of the human being as it is. And we are all at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ibad Allah, the ulama we have mentioned about the hardness and the harms of the heart, the qasli qalb. When the heart is called ya ibad Allah, and the ibadah becomes void of the khushu', meaning when your practices when your actions come devoid of your heart being connected and having the reverence and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are from the effects of the hard heart. وَقَلَبَ عَلَيْهِ الْبُخْرُ وَالْكِبِرُ And the person becomes stricken with miserliness, stinginess towards the good, towards Islam, towards the Muslims. This is from the effects of the hard heart, Ya Ibad Allah. We're so and having evil 
thoughts, suspicion from your brother. This is from the hard heart, Ya Ibadullah. Rasulullah Ba'idan min Allahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm Allahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Afwan. And becoming far, far removed from the masjid, far, far removed from the from the brothers, from the brotherhood, and far, far removed, therefore, from the Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the heart becoming restricted and mutashed and stern. The opposite of being lenient and merciful and humble with our brothers. Right, in fact, Allah, these are the traits of the hard heart that we must strive to change. And if we have these hard features, characteristics inside our heart, we will not taste the look of the other man. We will not taste the sweetness of the ibadah. We And we will become of those people who are struck with the fitna, servants of the dunya, slaves of this life. And we will be affected with fitna from this life, running from death. And wishing for a long, long end. And that's why in that law, the Tachaufuna Furah said the Dakika. Now, the mankind, the human being, we've been created so weak, Ya in that law. That we fear from the most minor of things. Something that you have to put under the microscope a quarter of a million times to even see it. Well, I should get in that law, I'm fine, but if you remember that. But shirk is more hidden than the black air uh, on the black rock during the middle of the night. Where shirk ya ibad Allah, we have more right to fear a shirk. Wa qalil al-men ya tawqahu fi al-fadihi, al-qalbihi. But so many little of us take so many precautions that we will take not to shake a hand, not to breathe, not to go, to hold it. How, what about a taqwa? Huh? How about a taqwa and how about staying free from a shirk? Shirk has more right to be feared, ya ibad Allah, than this COVID-19. An Imran, an Imran bin Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala an. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ra'a rajulan fi yadihi halakatun min al-safr. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he seen a man that had upon his finger a brass ring. And the Prophet asked him, Now, Hada, as he replied, Hada min al rahina. He said, This is to save me from weakness in my old age. Yani, this is to make me strong. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he commanded him, Inza'aha, take it off, destroy it. For in the halat azizuka illa wahanan. That thing is a shirk. And if you use that thing and you believe that that is going to help you in this life, then it will do the exact opposite. It will harm you now in this life. For in the care, now mitta wa hiya alay, wa hiya alay ka, fa aflahat ma aflahat abadan. And if you die with this belief and you die with this on your hand, then you will never be successful. Meaning the hellfire, abadan ya ibadullah. A shirk for the Muslim, it is the worst and the most unmanageable thing. A shirk. A shirk billah. It is worse than treason. It is worse than homosexuality. And it is worse than the COVID-19. May Allah protect us. Allahumma inna ka'afu wa intuhibbul afu. Fa'afu anna. Allahumma ihdina wa saddina. Naam. Inna nasaluka al-khuda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina. Inna alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, ya ibad Allah, qala Allah tibarakuhu wa ta'ala fi hadith al-Qudsi, man a'da li waliyan, man a'da li waliyan faqad a'adhantum bihaum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has informed us from his noble speech that is not recorded in the Qur'an, that whosoever a'da, Ada meaning barbar, meaning hatred, animosity in speech or in actions. Li waliyan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected this wali, this guardian, 
attributed to himself. Li waliyan. And anything that is connected with Allah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mudaf ilay to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it shows tashrif. It shows honor and grandeur. These are special people from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whosoever shows enmity against those special favorite ones of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal has permitted. He has permitted war upon them now. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, Dalika bi annahum shaqullaha wa rasulahu. This is because, and we know that they only had animosity against the believers for one thing. Because they oppose Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And to oppose Allah is to oppose, to oppose the Rasulullah is to oppose Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala attributed to Himself punishment. Ya Ibad Allah. Our current situation. No doubt for the Muslims, it's a test. For those Muslims who are affected, and if they are patient, if they die upon that impatience, and they hold it on to the Islam, we know that they are from the shuhada. From the shuhada. People will be talking about them, people will be jealous of them, wishing that they had met martyrdom the way that they had. No doubt for others, it is definitely a punishment for those kufar with the corpse in the dead hearts that reject the Lord and support of Allah Ta'ala, that oppose Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if they die in that state, we know they die a horrible and a miserable death. And what lies ahead for them is even worse. For surely, Ya Ibad Allah, without da'wa hadha tafkira li naj'ala kun tafkiratun. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, He made it a tafkira. A reminder for he who has a conscious ear. Meaning it is connected to the heart. Meaning the heart is not hard. Meaning the heart is serene. Ya ibad Allah. No doubt is a reminder. And any reminder when the reminder comes is the promise to make tawbah. Well, they said tawbah ya ikhwan fi islam maslakan wa'aran la yasinu ilayha mubtaqiha illa ba'adun ta'bu al-mushakka a tawbah ya ibad Allah is not something this big, up, slippery, merry way that is hard and tiresome la a tawbah is something that's easy it's something that's upon our tongue sahalatun wa siratun naam fa babuha maftu fi kulli limbah and the door is always open and there is no one in between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't despair, Ya Ibad Allah. This is the time for us to make tawbah. This is the time for us to rectify ourselves. This is a waking up for us. This is the time for us to call and join to the ma'rif. And what is the ma'rif? The ma'rif is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has registered for us. And to warn against the munkar. And what is the munkar? Can I call the Shaykh Allah ibn Uthameen rahimahullah ta'ala? Can I call as he said? And munkar is what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after Allah has prohibited for us. And the common people do not know what the munkar and the ma'ruf is except from the two evidences from the speech of Allah and the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our final advice, Ya Ibad Allah, comes from the Shaykh Hussain al Fawzan, Hafib of Allah Ta'ala. May Allah preserve our Shaykh. Our noble Shaykh command, as he said, in our final advice, Kitab Allah bayna aydina wa sunnatu rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bayna aydina. Remember that you said of the Salih, bayna aydina. Fa in kana min taqseer al khata fa innahu minna. فَإِنَّهُ مِنَّا Ya Ibad Allah The noble scholar He told us that we have the kitab of Allah We have the speech of Allah who has the that Between our heads, on our shelves, in our cars, on our shelves The Muslims preserved it There are people who spent their whole lives to preserve it To translate it Nothing and likewise with the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bayna aydina, it is with us. It's not something that's hidden. We have people that strong all in their lives to preserve it, to protect it, 
to pass it down from generation to generation. And we still had the biographies of the lives of the son of Musale. We had the lives, we had the biography, we had the stories of the righteous and noble predecessors of the past, Ya Ibad Allah. But in Kaaba bin Taqseer, any faults that we have, any mistakes that we have, any deficiencies that we have, it's from our own selves. Accountability, Ya Ikhwan, it's from our own selves. Had not the Tabi'i done their job, had not the Salaf of Salih, had they not done their job, had not the noble Sahaba, had they not done their job. When I came, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya tajawaza anna wa anko, ma qasarna fihi wa huwa kathir. And we had many shortcomings, ya ibad Allah. Many shortcomings. And we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon us from those shortcomings. And we know that it is Allah. Allah huwa izza al-Islam wa muslimin. وأدل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك وأعداء الدين ونصر عبادك الموحدين ونصر عبادك الموحدين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقيم عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين